Okay, I recently purchased this motorcycle center stand for my 2005 Triumph America. Bought it from Australia because actually the exchange rate was so good on the American dollar versus the Australian dollar that I got it shipped to me for under 200 bucks, which to buy this online in the U.S. was 250 bucks, and, and then you'd have to add postage on top of that. So I'm going to be doing the installation of this. And we'll start with the instructions here. Please ensure stand is fitted and checked by a competent person. Well, we're on shaky ground there, but we'll start and give it a try anyway. Okay, first step is we're going to have to remove the left-handed exhaust. According to this, just the left side, which we have one connector there. And then we have a bracket right here. And I don't know if you can quite see it, maybe. I can get you in at enough of an angle here. You can see the head of one of them. These are two Allen head screws. So I got to remove two Allen head screws underneath there, which are going to be kind of a hard reach, but it seems like there's plenty of room back behind there. So it'll be slow and tedious. I'm not going to uh, explain to you guys how to loosen nuts and bolts. I assume you know how to do that. So I'm just going to take them off and I will be back. Okay, the exhaust pipe is removed. Just to let you know, it was quite a struggle to get these two off which are connected to the bracket up here these are five millimeter allens and basically just go back and forth back and forth back and forth until the threads loosen up and slowly take them off so you don't damage anything so that's the best I can tell you about that this was pretty easy to get off although the clearance right in here it is so close to the clamp here that so you got to watch the clearance but that's a 13 millimeter and so if you have a thinner socket, 13 millimeter, the thinner the better. But you can get by with a regular socket if you're kind of careful. And that's just a pressure clamp. So after that all came off, it was just a matter of jiggling it for about two or three minutes. And it'll slide right off. Nothing else is holding it. So that's removing the exhaust. And hopefully I'm done with the hardest part. Now it's just putting the other thing up. Next step, you remove these two socket cap screws and they take an eight millimeter Allen wrench. So we're gonna remove those. Supposedly there's a captive plate behind it which will fall down. And you're supposed to reuse that. So we'll see what happens. Okay, I can feel the captive plate back there. The main thing when I get these out, and they were not really that difficult to get off. They loosened up pretty easy, but I'm just wondering how easy it's going to be to get that captive plate back in place. So we'll see. I'll just let it fall and we'll see what happens. There's one. It falls all the way out. That's good. Oh, I see it. It's right back here. So that's not going to be a bad deal. Okay. It's just a matter of holding it up in place. I thought the way they were, the way they were talking about it, it was going to be a little bit more difficult than that, but no biggie. This is the piece right here, so it's basically just a pair of nuts is all, just welded to a plate. No big deal. Okay, this is going to be fairly easy. So I think all the hard part is done. Next up, this is called the Stand Stop Spring Mounting. Assemble this piece from the parts in the bag, which are this little bag of parts that are with it. And what I've got looks like that. So we're ready to go and put that on the bike. Okay, I pushed it into the holes and then I'm going to use the captive mounting plate on the other side to screw it into. And just to re-familiarize yourself, this here is the front of the bike. I'm still on the left side of the bike. And so this part here is facing the rear of the bike, just to make sure you get that on right. And then the spring, I took it out of the way just for to make the visual a little bit better. The spring's laying down right here and I'll hook that back on when I get this bolted in place. But this is going to go around here behind it. Okay, this bracket is fully installed. Now to start hooking up the center stand itself. And you've got these two nylon locking bolts with a bushing in it. And the bushing, to show you how it goes, I've got it laying out here. It's not attached. It should be going in this hole right here. Okay, I got this here to show you a little bit better how this goes. These things, these bushings that look like little top hats, 
if you want to make it easier just take and slide each one of these in this one will fit in this way this one will fit in just like that so so they're both sticking out just slightly then when they go up underneath and the metal of the frame will be on this side and this side holding the bushings in place I'm gonna stick this bolt in here tighten it up with the nylon locking nut same thing with this one so then it'll go together and it'll pivot now we're dealing with the pivot bolts where the arm or the stand actually pivots on which is this one here and you can see that one with the wrench on it there this is 18 millimeter the other size the other side of it is with the nylon locking nut is 19 millimeter but if you don't happen to have a 19 millimeter wrench that's actually a three quarter inch wrench which works just as good and it's a nice tight fit so you can either find a 19 millimeter wrench or socket or just grab a three quarter box end if you happen to have that and there's my 18 millimeter there for this side and so we'll go about tightening up the pivot bolts the next part which they don't describe really well but they do show a picture is you're going to put this little bumper up into this part right here and it actually goes underneath like that and through the hole so it will look something like this it will be up in there so you'll only see it like from an angle like this you'll see when it's stuck up in the hole there something like that when I push it in and then this little part right here is the stop bolt that bumps up against the little bumper so that when you put the stand back up it bumps against that instead of bumping against metal or not having anything to stop by so next is putting in the stop mechanism next part putting on the spring that was super easy okay checking the brake line clearance because big kev had to end up bending his brake lines up and it looks to me like i have some pretty good clearance there i've got if you can see right in there it's about half an inch and this is as far up as the stand is going to go it'll go down but it won't go up any farther so the chances of it actually touching the brake line there is pretty much nothing and there's where the brake line comes up through there so got plenty of clearance never get closer than a half an inch so that should be fine but just in case like his bike you have that clearance problem be sure and check your brake line to make sure it doesn't touch you can also adjust your little stop mechanism here too if it's not giving you half an inch maybe it's a quarter inch and you want a little bit more you can adjust the stop nut that's behind here too and lower it down a little bit but don't lower it too much I want to keep it about even with the bottom of the main frame of the bike itself just for ground clearance okay center stand is installed up on the center stand it is not easy to get this bike up on the center stand by any stretch of the imagination it's doable but it's going to take a uh, quite a bit of pull to do it so if you have a problem with arm strength or leg strength it's not going to be something you're going to easily do unless you're maybe have the front end of the bike elevated a little bit on a slope or something like that but yeah it's uh it's doable so anyway i'll put the exhaust back on which is all that's left Reassembling the exhaust, which is just putting the clamp and the two bolts back, and then we will be finished.